Dr. Dre, you know he's not going to go soft, but Beats is going soft, or software at least, but why? How? Let's go to music industry veteran Ted Cohen. He's a former exec from EMI. Importantly, he's one of the guys who helped draft EMI's deals with Rhapsody in the iTunes Music Store. He's now a managing partner of TAG Strategic, a digital entertainment consulting firm. Ted joins us from LA. Ted, uh, what do you make of this deal? It's, it's kind of a shocker to me. It's kind of a good one. I mean, it has been talked about it for a few months that this was coming. Uh, David Hyman, who heads up MOG and founded MOG, has created a really strong service. Beats has raised the bar in terms of, I believe we're at the same point with audio that we got with uh, digital photography a few years ago, where we're past the point of it's convenient. It's got to sound better. And Beats, when Dre and Jimmy got together with Noel Lee at Monster and created the Beats product, they made people start thinking about better sound. And then HTC comes along and they buy Beats and incorporate that into the phone. And now adding a music service that sounds better. Uh, David streams the music at 320 instead of 160, so well, it just right. sounds let's, better. Let's, I think people are ready for this. Let's talk about I'm that because sorry. I think that you know so much of the business has been about getting music digital, getting availability out there, licensing, 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 without a real focus right. on the, the oral quality. Right. And now we have a chance for music to sound as good as photography looks. I mean, if you look at how bad digital photography was 10 wow. years ago, and you look at what can be done with a Canon EOS right now, we're at that same tipping point where high-definition audio... I mean, the other thing that changes the game here, the Beats Mog thing is really important. What Sonos has done in the last few years has changed it from being two earbuds, you know, in either ear to a wired, you know, a wireless music system in your home. So once it gets off of, you know, inexpensive buds and, and cheap little MP3 players, people want it to sound better. Yeah, it, it is interesting to look at the sort of differentiating mechanism here. Uh, when, in, when the early days of sort of putting music digital with Rhapsody in iTunes, I wonder if, if the sound quality and the sampling rate was one of the things that was discussed between the labels and the likes of Apple. Well, in the early days, I mean, that was part of my tenure at EMI. In the, in the early days of this, all we were doing was either doing one of two things. Sending Apple or Rhapsody or Napster at the time, the legal Napster, boxes of CDs that they could rip themselves, or we would send them hard drives with CD files that we had ripped from CDs. What's happening now, the Grammys, it's coincidentally, it's a perfect storm right now. The producer and engineer's wing of the Grammys, a woman named Maureen Droney, is heading up an initiative where the labels are going back into the vaults and they're remastering for digital. So it's not coming off of just a ripped really? CD. It's coming, off, it's coming off the best quality source tapes that can be located. So this is all what's happening with Beats and happening with Mog and happening with Sonos and happening with companies like AKG with their headphones and B&W with their headphones. This is all coming together at a time when people are expecting better quality. So this is a storm, but a great storm. Ted, I'm getting a sense that, that there are actually a lot of uh, changes still possible. It seemed at a certain point that iTunes just had a lock on the music industry. But with the success of Spotify and, and the notion that there are different ways, different qualities of the music you can download, that maybe this game isn't over yet. I don't think the game is over. I think Apple's done an amazing job. iTunes is a great service. I think we learned that it's not about a la carte 99 cents a track. Spotify showed that people have an appetite for an all-you-can-eat model, and the tie-in with Facebook has been great, and as they've expanded that and allowed RDO and MOG and other services to plug into Facebook, that's been even better. But quality is going to be important, and when we get into high-definition audio, there are some players out there, some, some uh, electronics manufacturers and some services that are going to raise the bar. Now, can Apple basically imitate that at a certain point? Absolutely. But I think the winner is going to be the consumer. Well, let's talk about what this means for artists as well, because the, the, the deals with the artists, not just the songwriters, but with the artists, are very different for online and streaming. Do, do you get a sense that that's something that makes the artists want to be more involved in the actual participation of these online services? Well, I think they want their music to sound as good as possible. And I, so I think, uh, I know at least on the EMI, was the, my, my alma mater was the first label to step up and do this remastering effort. And I think uh, the artists are happy with it because 
MP3 sounded okay. There's a corollary that fast food tastes good at high speed, but doesn't taste good when you're sitting still at a table. It's the same thing with digital music. As you're at home listening on decent speakers now, or at least listening on decent headphones, it's got to sound better. But at the same time, for, for HTC and Beats and Mog to get together and offer a mobile music service that, where the quality is built in all the way through the signal chain, that's a big step. Yeah, go imagine music that sounds good. Even Katy Perry sounding good. Imagine that. I'm all for it. All right, Ted Cohen <laughs> from L.A. joining us uh, from Los Angeles. Thanks very much.